Last time on the Skip and Josh podcast. Because there was an interception in that game. Yeah. And I think it deflected off a player and then another guy intercepted it. I don't remember exactly how it happened, but yeah. Chris Collinsworth made this comment. Mm-hmm. He's like, he just picked that ball out of midair. Isn't that the definition of an interception? Yes, that's every interception. <laughs> that's every interception. You're listening to the Skip and Josh podcast with Skip Sherman and Josh Obadia. I'm Josh in Toronto. And I'm Skip in Montreal. In today's episode, we give out our 2018 awards for Play of the Year, Athlete of the Year, Game of the Year, and Team of the Year. Okay, Skip, it's that time of year where all the television stations and radio stations and newspapers and websites do their 2018 year in review. And so we're going to be a carbon copy of all of those. (laughs) <laughs> and we're going to do our 2018 year in review. Yeah, except ours is so much better, no? Ours is... Whenever I tweet about this show, this will be the third annual, mm-hmm. third one. I always say it's the, the, most, uh, the most coveted and the most, um, the most coveted and the most prestigious award in all of uh, sports podcasts. According to who? According to me. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, then it must be true. Right. So, um... Because I don't remember all the categories that we hand out awards for. Yeah. You're going to have to refresh my memory. So here's what we're going to do today. We're going to give out the award for Team of the Year. Are these really awards, though, or are they just... It's just our choices. Okay. It, it, I think for it to have an award, the award would have to have a name. And it doesn't have one. Like, you know, the Oscar. Right. Or the Emmy. Right. Or the SB. We don't have that. And we don't have one. We also don't have a trophy to give to anybody. That's right. (laughs) So it's not really an award. Right. It's just our favorite of everything. So we're going to give out our favorite, uh, what we're saying, what we're considering is the best team of the year, Mm -hmm. um, the best game of the year, Mm -hmm. the best play of the year, Mm -hmm. and the, what we call the ultimate MVP, which is like the athlete of the year, I guess, right? Okay. And then we have a pop culture segment Mm -hmm. where we're going to talk about... um, our favorite movie, TV show, uh, and song. Song has been an interesting category in years past where we don't even know each other's song. You're not going to know mine this year. That may happen again. Yeah. And I think you wanted to add best concert. I didn't go to a concert this year, but you can tell me about a concert that you went to. Okay. So you want to start with... Yes. (laughs) Do you want to start with... Let's start with like the team of the year. Okay. And this is for all of 2018. All right. You're going to have to go first. Okay. So (laughs) this is like, you know, when the waiter comes to the table Mm -hmm. and, you know, you're going or the waiter's going around the table and Mm -hmm. you need two more minutes with the menu. You're like, okay, come back to me. Yes. That's going to happen a lot today. (laughs) So the last two years when we did this, I shied away of giving, I shied away of giving any awards to the teams that played in the Super Bowl which technically happened in the same year, Mm -hmm. right? So, I mean, we're talking about all of 2018. So most of the NFL playoffs and the the Super Bowl were in 2018. And the years past, I didn't feel, I felt kind of weird about giving awards for those, but this year is going to be different. Mm -hmm. And you know why? Because you know who won the Super Bowl, right? That's right. So I, I looked through the team of the year and I was trying to think, you know, Red Sox won the World Series, Capitals obviously were a huge story, Golden State Warriors you know, won again, and it was a World Cup year, so there was France, (laughs) Um, England, who did great for me, you know, like, they were my favorite team of the year, maybe, but I mean, it has to be the Philadelphia Eagles. (laughs) Doesn't it have to be the Philadelphia Eagles, the team of the year? And the game is over! The game is over! The Philadelphia Eagles are Super Bowl champions! Eagles fans everywhere this is for you. Let the celebration begin. For you, it does. For me, it's, for me, like there's no other choice. Okay. You know? Yeah. So um, I'm gonna go a little bit different yeah, than sure. you. Yeah. And actually, I didn't even really decide until just now. Hence, why I needed the extra few seconds. <laughs> okay, great. Um, but I'm actually, you know, the Red Sox had a phenomenal year. Not not only did they win the World Series, yeah. but they also won, I think it was 108 games. They were, I don't know if they were wire to wire, like meaning they were in first place from the first day, but they were damn close. Right. Yeah. And also, they beat the second best and the third best teams in baseball 
in order to get to the World Series. Without breaking a sweat, pretty much. Right. They yeah. only lost three games in the entire postseason, I yeah. think. Yeah, yeah. And one of those was an 18-inning 18 18 game. game. Yeah. So, so they would be justified if they were the team of the year. Mm -hmm. But they didn't win for me. Okay. Oh. Oh. And? This is, <laughs> this is like that old uh, Ian McDonald picking, making his picks in the Gazette, giving all the reasons why you want one thing and then picking something else. Right. Another team that would um, be worthy of the team of the year yeah. would be the Washington Capitals. For sure. Because they have had so many struggles for as long as since I was maybe 12 years old. Yeah. You they've know? always been a good team. Right, but never a good playoff never team. Never a great team. And, and they've, never, they've only made it to the finals once, and they got swept. Yeah. And other than that, I don't think they've even been past the second round. Right. Um, and, you know, Ovechkin isn't really a young kid anymore. Mm -hmm. And so, so it was a feel-good story. So if you would have picked the Washington Capitals as a team of the year, you would have been justified in doing that as well. Yeah. But I'm not picking them either. Oh, jeez. My team of the year is the Vegas Golden Knights. And it's over, and the Vegas Golden Knights will play for the Stanley Cup. <laughs> wow, Josh. <laughs> you went off the board, and I didn't know where you were going with that. And if I wasn't such an Eagles fan, I would, I would agree wholeheartedly. The fact that it's they a were a tremendous pick. The fact that they were an expansion team and yeah. did what they did yeah. and almost won the Stanley Cup. And they made it all the way. And I would have been so happy if they won the Stanley Cup. Yeah. Um, That's a and, great pick. And the fact that they really made all the other 30 teams in the NHL look so dumb and yeah. so stupid. Yeah. I love the Vegas Golden Knights. It's so great because, you know, when I'm think, doing the research for this, I'm think you just gravitate towards the champions. Mm -hmm. It just goes to show how... The, the, the losers are forgotten, right? right? The, right. the teams that lose in the finals, no one remembers, right? right? And I, I didn't even consider the Vegas Golden Knights as team of the year, but they certainly are, you know? So they're I my mean, team of the they're year. They're not following it up that well. They're okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but wow, that's tremendous. All right. I love it. Okay. So the next category that we're going to go to is the, I mean, for me, it's going to seem so redundant because it's, so Philadelphia centric, but the play of the year. Okay. Now I had in to, to help you with your research. I sent you a list mm -hmm. that I that was compiled by the Ringer website. Yeah. Of the forty five best plays of the year. Can yeah. you imagine? And some of them were garbage. I don't even understand how some of them made their list. They had some WWE stuff in there. It was bad. Out of yeah. the forty five, there were maybe three good things. Yeah. So I thought about a lot of plays. Um. I mean. I don't want to steal your thunder, but like the Braden Holtby save against the Penguins mm -hmm. in game two of their series, mm -hmm. that, that kind of propelled the Capitals. Yeah. Like that's got to be up there, right? Um, and then I thought of like a couple of like bad plays. <laughs> yeah. Right? Like J.R. Smith trying to dribble the ball out in game one of the finals. Yeah. And uh, Serena Williams' meltdown. <laughs> that's right. I forgot about that. Was that was memorable. Yeah. Um, but, you know, when I saw that list of... 45 plays that the ringer came out with and my play wasn't number one i was in shock because for me was your play even on the list yes it was like 16 or 20 but like for me as soon as i thought of play of the year i'm like this has to be the play of the year there's there's no other play that could compare to it i'm so curious to know what <laughs> what play you're talking about it's the philly special the play that the eagles ran on fourth and goal in the super bowl where they faked the end around twice and nick Foles caught the touchdown pass here we go this could decide the game. Fourth and goal. Okay. And they're going to snap it. And it's Trey Burton who throws caught. Foles. Touchdown. I mean, like, how, how could there be any other play? That's the play of the year. <laughs> Is this a Philadelphia show? Is that, are we, did, have we moved to Philadelphia and, I, and no one told me? No, but we're, we're getting there. So that was a very good play. Yeah. So, um... None of the ones that you mentioned are my play of the year. Oh, I thought you were, I really thought you were picking Holtby. No. The play I was considering picking, yeah. but I didn't pick, yeah. is the, between the Minnesota Vikings and I think it was the New Orleans Saints. When the safety fell down? When the safety fell down. <laughs> they call that the Minnesota Miracle. Right. So, 
But that can't be the best play of the year. That can be the worst play of the year. Right. Because, like, how could that be the best play of the year? It's the safety fell down. Like, exactly. He, he didn't even fall down. He tackled the air. He, yes. He, he went underneath the guy for yeah. some strange reason. Oh. I don't know. So but, that's not, but that's not my, my play oh, of the year. Okay. My play of the year, and part of the reason this is my play of the year is because I actually watched this live. Okay. It happened during March Madness. Yeah. And, you know, some years in March Madness, there's a lot of buzzer beaters. There is, yeah. Well... There was this particular game, and I think it was the first weekend of, of the tournament, That's which is usually the, the best, best weekend yeah. of the tournament, yeah, the best where, uh, where Michigan was playing Houston, and a player on Michigan, whose name is Jordan Poole, yeah. sank a buzzer beater yeah. to beat Houston. Yeah. Like, they, they, they thought, they, they, everyone thought the game was over yeah, and remember. Houston was advancing to the next round. I remember it well. Like, I think they'd already booked their plane tickets. They did, yeah. <laughs> but then all of a sudden, Jordan Poole hits this shot from almost half court. Right. And, and Michigan wins. Right, next thing you know. So, so that, to me, is the play of the year. He rifles it right in front of us to Abdul Rahman at midcourt. Extra pass. And it goes for the win! The three-pointer by Jordan Poole! A freshman has won it for the Wolverines! Wow. It's kind of off off the book. Was it in the list of the 45 players? It, wa- it was in the list, it yes. Was. It okay. was in the list. Very good. All right. So, um, player of the year. Sort of like the MVP of MVPs. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, we, we talked about this off air. And, like, there's a few guys in the NFL that you can consider. Um, if you can think about the end of last year and then all of this season so far. I mean, the end of last year, if you look at Nick Foles... Um, this year, Pat Mahomes, Todd Gurley, like who are the who are the big guys that they're Mahomes and Gurley are the ones that people are talking about for MVP or Drew Brees, right? But I don't know. I mean, in the in the MLB, you had Mookie, Mookie Betts, yeah, or JD Martinez, or, or Yelich. Uh, I'm not sure, right? Right. Um, NBA, well, I mean, Harden won the MVP, but I find it hard to say it's not like Durant or Curry, but maybe they cancel each other out. And then there's my pick. Which is? Which is Alexander Ovechkin. And the one and last thing. Before the year, I said, not me say, it's uh, it just us saying, we're not going to be f***ing sunk this year. We're the Stanley Cup champions. That's a very good pick. Now, not only did he lead his team to the Stanley Cup championship. Well, you don't like to say the Stanley Cup championship. No, just the Stanley they Cup. They just won the Stanley Cup. Yeah. Um, first time in franchise history, as you just mentioned before. Um, and Ovechkin was, he was their best player in the playoffs. Won the Conn Smythe and the whole deal. But like, he wasn't like, oh my God, Ovechkin. He wasn't playing at another level. He was playing at Ovechkin's level. The level he always plays at, which yeah. is great. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, but like what put him over the top for me was just the, um, and we talked about this the day after the, the podcast episode after they won the cup, Mm -hmm. the emotion on his face when they handed him the cup and he raised it in the air. I mean, you could be the most, the biggest Ovechkin hater in the world, Mm -hmm. you know? I mean, there's nobody that could watch that and not say, oh my God, this is amazing. This, it was amazing. He was like a kid in a candy store. And then, he, and then he continued with it for a month celebrating the Stanley Cup. And, I mean, one day we'll get the memoirs of what happened to the Stanley Cup when it was on tour with the Capitals and every, all the partying that took place. Well, you'll see a few dents in it, I think. I'm sure, right? So, anyways, Ovechkin's my, my, my pick for Player of the Year. So, this is a situation where I'm afraid I'm going to have to agree with you. Oh, Oh, and and but it's but it's and it's for the reasons that you stated. Yeah, you know I agree that Ovechkin is the player of the year, but not only those reasons because if you look at this current NHL season, yeah, where everyone thought there would be a Stanley Cup hangover, literally, because yeah. <laughs> literally because he drank the whole off season. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, he is still on fire now. Yeah, like he had two games in a row where he had two hat tricks in a row. Yeah, and he's still lighting up the lamp. Yeah, he's still playing great. Capitals are fine. Yeah. Like, I remember, if you think back to the beginning of last season, before they went, they won the cup, Mm -hmm. right? They had a great year the year before, and they fizzled out in the playoffs. Well, they they lost to the Penguins, as they they always do. They always do. And they asked him, what do you think the season's going to be next year? And he said, we won't suck. 
right? Like, mm-hmm. and that was his way of saying, you know, we're going to be in the playoffs. We're a good team. We're going to be in the playoffs. And like, can we win the cup? I don't know. You know, it's like there's so much luck that goes into it. There's so many things yeah. that go into it. You can't promise you're going to win the cup, but you you know you're going to be there. You know you're going to be in contention, and that's what that's what they were. And now again, now this year, they're going to be in the mix again, right? Yeah. So and now now that they kind of I know it's a cliche, and I'm putting holding up the air quotes so you could see they know how to win. Maybe maybe they do know how to win. People listening now. to the podcast can't see your air quotes. <laughs> the News Channel Eight. <laughs> <laughs> People on News Channel Eight can see. But, yeah, but, I mean, now they know how to win, so we'll see. But, you know, Ovechkin's interesting, right? Because you talked about how he's still scoring. He is. He's still so good, right? Yeah. Remember when he came in the league? I mean, we never saw, like, or we hadn't seen in a long time, a combination of power and speed and goal-scoring ability. Mm -hmm. Like, the guy was like a tank on the ice, right? Yeah. And firing shots from everywhere, going in. Like, he was like, he was like, he was like some kind of robot, you know? Like, who is this guy? Is he human? A Russian robot. Yeah. He was like, uh, yeah. So, 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 and then there was always the talk of like, can he keep it up? Because his body is like, he he played very recklessly with his body. And he stayed healthy. He's never really been injured. Yeah. And one thing that we're finding out is like, his goal scoring ability is still there, right? Yes. He doesn't play as like reckless as he used to, but he still does. He's still a physical player, and right? he has a great shot. He's he's got a great shot. I, you know, when we were growing up and Brett Hull was scoring all those goals, right? Yeah, in the eighties and nineties, and I used to watch Brett Hull play, and he used to just be in the slot, and I'd be like, they know he's going to be in the slot. How come they're not covering him? Why are they letting him get open in the slot? And then when I watch the Capitals play, it's the same freaking thing. He's he's there on his side, you know. He's a right-handed yeah, shot yeah. on the left side. Same place as Steven and Stamkos. Everybody knows where he's going to be, and they know exactly where he's going to be. They defend it, and he still scores. Sometimes there's a power play situation. No, no, of so course. They're, they're they're you know they're yeah, short-handed. They're scrambling. Yeah, the, the defensive team is short-handed, so you can't cover a certain yeah, player. Yeah. But if you're going to leave a player open, that's not the one to leave open. It's certainly not. <laughs> So Ovechkin, maybe uh, we've never had back-to-back uh, ultimate MVPs. I don't remember who we picked the last. Well, few I years, didn't pick Ovechkin last year. But maybe, maybe if they win back-to-back, he certainly would be in contention next year. He would be, but yeah. also it depends how he, he starts his 2019 season next year. That's true. Because it's the calendar. Yeah, year. yeah, that's true. Because he's certainly like just he scored back-to-back hat tricks. What last week? Yeah, yeah, right? exactly. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, there you go. <laughs> so uh, the last category in the sports. Uh, the sports area Mm -hmm. is the game of the year. Okay. I thought of a bunch of games. I mean, I, I mentioned this to you off air just to you were, we were trying to think of, you know, making sure we had all our bases covered. So, I mean, I already mentioned it in another category, but like the caps, I mean, it's hard to remember one game of the capital run, but certainly like that, Game two against Pittsburgh when Holtby made that save. Was that the turning point? You know where that goalie stick is right now? <laughs> it's at Tony Kornheiser's <laughs> restaurant, or so he says. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I guess that's that was sort of like the game that propelled them past the Penguins. Or yeah. maybe it was when they beat the Penguins. You know, I don't know. Um, this year we had a great game in the NFL. Yeah. When the Rams beat the Chiefs. Well, I liked it. I don't think you liked it so well, much. Well, I mean... I mean, you know it's a great game when it's like 11 o'clock at night and me and you are texting nonstop every play. Yeah. Right? Like, so that, that, gives, you, that gives you a clue of like how we got sucked into it. No, like... Usually was, I'm asleep by then. It was definitely the most... No, when you say that I didn't like it, it's like... It's not that I didn't like it. It was incredibly entertaining and I was sucked in like everybody else. And it broke fantasy football. <laughs> it literally did. Yeah. Um, but was it like the best football I ever saw? No, it was the best offensive football I ever saw, I guess. Yeah. Um, there was also some great games in baseball this year. I mean, you talked about how the Red Sox, you know, basically didn't break a sweat, but they did lose one 18 inning game in the mm-hmm. World Series yeah. to the Dodgers. So that was a memorable game. Although, like full disclosure, like I was sleeping. <laughs> yeah, I only watched the first. So I find nine it hard. I find it hard to give a game of the year to a game that I mostly slept through. Okay, you you missed half of it. Yeah. So I mean, going back to the Philadelphia theme, the game of the year had to be the Super Bowl. For okay. me, that for me that was the game of the year. I mean, high scoring, right? Turnovers, big plays. Brady Brady throwing for five hundred yards on losing. <laughs> you know, Nick Foles MVP. 
Like, the whole, just the storybook of it, you know? For me, that's the game of the year. So, that game is not my game of the year. Yeah. It made my honorable mentions. Good, because it was a very good game, it very was. entertaining. It was. I yeah. Mean, I mean, we've, we've lived through most of our lives with lousy Super Bowls. Right. Right? Many yes. years, the Super Bowl is not all it's cracked up to be. This yeah. one was. Yeah, you know? it was. It was a very fun Super Bowl to watch. Yeah. Um, so, it made my honorable mention list. And the the Chiefs Rams game, the fifty four fifty one game, yeah, also a very exciting game. Beautiful. Also made my honorable mention list. Yeah. Um, and the problem with hockey and baseball, it's usually a best of seven, so it's not just one game. Like you have to win sixteen hockey games to win the Stanley Cup. It's hard, yeah. And, and you have to win, I don't know, is it twelve baseball games? You have to win four plus four. Plus, plus three. three. Eleven. Eleven if you're not the wild card team. Yeah. Twelve if you are the wild card team. Right. So that's why I said twelve. Right. So so there wasn't just one game you know, that yeah. the Red Sox st- stood out. There wasn't just one game for me that the Capitals stood out. Yeah. Um so the game of the year for me, I go back to March Madness again. Oh great. And it's not Villanova, even yeah. though they won the championship yeah. quite easily. I was thinking about this game you're about to say. Yeah, it's when UMBC, a 16 seed, <laughs> defeated Virginia because a 16 seed has never won a game before. Right. And if you had asked anybody before that, is a 16 seed going to win a game? Everyone would have said no. Incredible performance. Shock it all in college basketball. UMBC makes history in Charlotte. In fact, the fact that I think four 15 seeds or, or six 15 seeds have won games in the history of college yeah, basketball. That's enough. That's that's a lot to me. Yeah. That 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 means that that means that six number two seeds lost their first round game. Yeah. So that's a lot. Yeah. So the fact that UMBC defeated Virginia. Yeah. You know, I only tuned into that game late. Yeah. Actually, that's not true. I was watching the first half, and UMBC had the lead at halftime, I think, or it was a tie game or but something. But Virginia was like, not only were they the number one seed, they were the number one number one. Exactly, Top yes. rated team in the country. Yeah, they were. Yeah. Um, now, in fairness to them, they were missing one of their best players that yeah. game. And they're not an offensive team to start with. It's a defensive right. team. Right. But when I saw that the score was close at halftime, I'm like, okay, whatever. Virginia's going to pull away in the yeah. second half. Yeah. But then, lo and behold, second half comes around. It matter. They're not pulling away. In no. fact, UMBC was pulling away. They were and, unconscious. And I wasn't really watching that game. But then when I saw what was going on, I'm like, okay, we got to watch this game. Yeah. And then they, they actually ended up winning. And, and even when the final buzzer went still, and they won, yeah. I still couldn't believe what I saw. And every single person in the country's bracket was busted. Yes. Although, because everybody had Virginia, no one's bracket was really busted. Right. It just depended on how far you had them going, you know? If you had them going to the Final Four, you're screwed. But some people may have only picked them for one or two rounds. I guess, you know, they're limited to damage, right? I had them going all the way to the final, I think. So my bracket was busted. Now, interestingly enough, there is a pool that I know of where if you finish in last, you get a prize. Okay. And the per- and this one person I don't know him personally, he intentionally tried to finish last. Right. And so he picked all the sixteen seeds oh my to God, win. But that ruined him. It ruined him. Yeah. It did. Especially if there's one of those pools where you get, like, I don't I don't multiplier think, uh, by the seed. Yeah, I don't think that he got bonus points for it. But he picked crazy. all the sixteen seeds to win to go all the way to the final four. Awesome. And uh, because UMBC won this game, he didn't finish last. That's amazing. Yeah. I love it. So. All right, that's a good good pick. I like your picks. All right, I like yours. <laughs> We're gonna go to the pop culture uh, time of uh, uh, segment of the podcast. I had to do a little bit of homework for this one. You did, right? Yeah. Do you want to start with TV, movies, or whatever you want? So let's start with TV. You know, TV's interesting now because TV's better than movies now. <laughs> right? Yes, that's right. Netflix, Amazon, all the streaming, HBO. You know, there's so much options. Like, cable TV shows are mostly considered garbage. Mm-hmm. Like, it's considered, like, low ends. you know, network TV. Um, that being said, I looked at a list of some of the best shows that I watched this year. And I didn't, like, love any of them. I liked a lot of shows this year. But there, it's, it's, so I'm going to give the award to, like, my favorite show. But it's not like, like, I think last year, the year, two years ago, I picked Stranger Things. Mm-hmm. You know, that was, I remember I was that. crazy about it. I don't even remember what I picked last year, but like, so some of the best shows I watched this year, um, 
Well, we had a whole episode on the Americans. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so the, la the final season of the Americans was pretty good. I really enjoyed it. Although um, I don't think it was great, you know, like I liked the, I liked, it was great because we found out what happened. Yes. Right. But I, as a season, it was, it was really good, you know. Um, I watched this show also that a lot of people were talking about, Killing Eve. Okay. It's really good. I highly recommend it. Um, we, we watched a show on Netflix, Netflix called Glow. Haven't heard of it's it. It's called Glow stands for the Gorgeous Ladies of Wrestling. Now, it's not a wrestling show. <laughs> like, you're rolling your eyes at me because you think I'm talking about a wrestling show. No, no, no. I'm, I'm rolling my eyes because I thought Glow was spelled G-L-O and where's the W? No, G-L-O-W, okay. yeah. So you could ask my wife about it. She absolutely loved it. It's like a, a comedy. Okay. Like a sort of dramedy, you know? Okay. About like these female wrestlers in the 80s and like how they got started with this like local TV show. It's really, really well done. There's two seasons and it's super, super funny and really, really good. Um, but that being said, I also, there's an Amazon streaming show called Jack Ryan. You know, based on I've heard the, of that. the Tom Clancy shows. It's with uh, the guy from The Office. <laughs> they never watched The yeah. Office. So that's actually really good. I really, really enjoyed it. Um, but I think my number one show of the year was a British show mm. called, well, it's not The Bodyguard, because that's a Whitney Houston, Kevin Costner movie from the 80s, but it's just Bodyguard. I heard some people at my office talking about this show. It's pretty good. It, there's only six episodes, mm -hmm. which a lot of the British shows that's how they that's how they do it, right? And so, but they're like they're long, right? They're like an hour long, you know. So it's like watching like two, three movies, you right? Know? Right, right. Um, it's really, really good. It's just a great drama. What I really loved about it is there's so much tension. Like the way the the director directs the episodes, you're on your edge of your seat. Like the first episode, there's this scene with like a bomb on a train, and you're like, you don't even know the characters. You're like, what the hell? You know, it's really it reminds me of the first season of Twenty Four. In a way, yes. Um, the d director just does a great job of keeping the tension up and getting you on the edge of your seat. You know, for six episodes, which is pretty good. So that's my number one show. I'm surprised you didn't pick a Danish show this year. Well. Actually, the final season of The Bridge, we did watch it this year. Mm -hmm. And I went over this list with my wife because I was trying to remember all the shows we watched this year because there's a lot. And she's like, what about the last season of The Bridge? We watched that this year. I'm like, yeah, but it wasn't, didn't deserve mentioning. Okay. It was great that the series ended and, and we found out what happened, sort of like The Americans, but it just wasn't as good as the other seasons that I, that I mentioned. Okay. Yeah. So I'm going to cheat because I'm going to tell you all the shows on my list that didn't win, first of all. Okay, great. I want to hear them. So The Americans is on my list. I sure. love that show and it was yeah. really great. And, yeah. and, and I was so excited about the last season. Um, and, and to find out what finally happens was, was very cool. Yeah. So that's, you know, honorable mention, yeah. obviously. Yeah. Um, another show that I liked, and so here's another reason I'm cheating because some of the shows I'm going to mention... These are old shows. Right, okay. I only just watched them in 2018. Right. But they're old. But I don't care because well, I only, no, I only watch them. Yeah. So I watched Homeland, not even the most recent season, the season before that, season six. The one that's in... Uh... In New York. In New York, yeah. yeah. Oh, it's okay. Apparently there's a season seven. There is also, but after season six, I just gave up on it. Okay. It was okay. So there was that. Yeah. There, there was that. Um, and then... There are some shows on regular television that I still watch that I actually like. I know, the Goldbergs. Like the Goldbergs and Modern Family and yeah. Schitt's Creek, a yeah. CBC show, yeah. and a NBC show called uh, This Is Us. Well, which that I think, was your top show last year. I think year. that was my top show last year. So, Well, I mean, This Is Us, I mean, a lot of, that's critically acclaimed. A lot of people love that show. So those are all good shows. But for me, that's a crying show. I don't know if I want to, I never wanted to get into it. It seems too, I have to really invest emotionally to be watching okay. that. Fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I don't think I've ever cried. No. I mean, yeah, it's not a it's, happy it's show. It's not a happy but, show. It's heavy. But, yeah. It's heavy. Um, but then, but then we get to uh, my top two shows. I'll give you number two first and then number one mm -hmm. will be the number one show. Love it. So number two for me, again, not from 2018, an old show. Yeah. I just started watching this year and it's um, Breaking Bad. Oh, well, yeah, you told me you were going to start watching it. Yeah. yeah. So I'm on season four, 
Okay. Don't well, tell me what happens. But season three and four are where it hits its Yeah, stride. season one and two were just no, it's ordinary Season to one me. is interesting because the whole idea of this teacher right. making mess, you know, like it's cool. And then season two, it kind of goes along. But then three and four, it really like yeah. gets going. Well, really four. Yeah. Like the last maybe two episodes of season three. Okay, yeah. Is when I started to really get interested in it. Okay. Anyway, but my favorite show that I watched, and I haven't even finished the whole series. Yeah. I'm only on season six. Yeah. Is Entourage. But but oh, we talked about Entourage this year, right? You, uh, we, we may have. We didn't talk about it in the awards, but you told me you were watching it. Yeah. Oh, but there's so many episodes. I know, but th- it's it's hilarious. I, I, I mean, I didn't get the chance to watch it when it first came out, but yeah. I had seen commercials and of trailers course, for it, yeah. and it looked great, and I wanted to watch it, but I think it was on HBO. It was. And I didn't get HBO no, no, back then. No, at the time, for the people who are in the United States or in Canada, like, just to understand, like... HBO shows weren't always easy for us to get. Yeah. Yeah. So Especially back then. Right. So yeah. anyway, so I'm on season six and I don't know, I, I got to finish Breaking Bad before I can even continue yeah. Entourage. But, but then you have to watch the Entourage movie at the end. Okay. Well, I'll do it all in order. Because the Entourage movie like puts a, an end to That's everything. fine. Yeah. So it's funny because now I'm seeing all these commercials on television for this new movie that just came out. Aquaman. <laughs> yeah, and it's reminding me of Entourage. Every time I saw the commercials for Aquaman, well, I knew that they were making the movie for so long, but I keep thinking about the, the what's better is this this like Mar this DC movie that's out round in the theaters. Is that better than the than the the Entourage version? Like, I think the Entourage version might be better. I don't know. Well, I'm not going to see the one at the theater. The now. one in the theater now looks like hot garbage, if you ask me. <laughs> Honestly, I won't be. I haven't seen any of the Aquaman, Aquaman movies, and I'm not going to. <laughs> cool. So movies. I actually, I actually saw a lot of movies this year. My wife was like, "Let's go to the movies. Let's go to the movies." So I, like, I saw quite a bit of movies. Mm-hmm. We were in the theater often. So I have like a little short list of like some of the really memorable movies that i that i saw this year let's okay. just say all right well i mean black panther was out this year and it got a lot of praise and and acclaim and even the critics liked it for a marvel movie and let's just say i liked it i didn't i wasn't over the moon with it and everything but i liked it um bohemian rhapsody which is i think you saw it last night mm-hmm. <laughs> i really really love that movie i think if you ask my wife she'll tell you that's her favorite movie of the year mm-hmm. um there's a movie that my daughter told me to watch, and I watched it on an airplane, and then I liked it so much, I watched it a second time on another flight, which is a, it's a teen movie called Love, Simon. Okay. It's sort of like a, it's like a typical teen coming of age movie, but the main character is gay. Okay. So that's like not well, something you see every day. I actually, I've heard of this movie. I didn't see it, but yeah. I've heard of it. It's, it's really, really quite a good movie. And um, a movie that I really wanted to love, <laughs> I had such high expectations, and I wish I was telling you right now that it was my favorite movie of the year, but it wasn't. It was just good. It was A Star is Born. Okay. I mean, you, I listened. You, you did really like it, you I, told I me. liked it. My wife didn't mm. love it. She thought it was okay. I liked it. I thought it could have been better. Um, it's the kind of movie where you're like... You need to be like emotionally invested in the characters, and then a lot of like really... I mean, I don't want to give any spoilers, but a lot of stuff happens that's sad. <laughs> really, some real sad stuff happens. And I was like, oh, okay. You know, I, it, I, it, I didn't feel it as much as I wanted to. And the woman who was sitting next to us at the movie theater was, like, crying uncontrollably. I thought they were, like, I don't know how she was able to get her strength to, like, walk out and leave the theater at mm. the end. She was just crying. <laughs> you know, so, like, I had sort of the opposite reaction. Okay. Um, but my number one movie of the year, that being said, and I'm not a romantic comedy guy at all, is a movie that you talked about a couple of weeks ago, which is Crazy Rich Asians. Which I have not seen, by the way. No. No, when you mentioned that that you talked about how it was funny, the actress, one of the actresses, Aquafina, you had mentioned, you know, a little, little blurb about, like, what kind of name is that? And I already knew that it was my number, I already knew it was going to be my oh. number one movie of the year when we were doing our I awards. Okay. So I didn't want to say too much. Okay. But it's a, such a great movie, honestly. I don't like romantic comedies. I don't care about them. But it's, it's emotional. It's heartwarming. It's funny. It's really funny. It's just really, really great movie. And I recommend it. I mean, if the goal of seeing a movie is to be entertained, like that's, it's achieved its goal. It's really great. Okay. Yeah. It's not going to win any Academy Awards, you know, but for me, it was the best movie I saw this year. 
So I don't go to movies hardly any movies at all. Yeah. In fact, as you mentioned, I went to a movie yesterday. Yeah. That was my second movie all year. Oh, brother. So, so, so there's only two possibilities. So there's only two possibilities for me for my, for my top movie of the year. Yeah. And the movie I saw in July is my runner-up. Oh, okay. And that one is called Sicario. Yeah. Day of the Soldado. Sicario 2, I call it. Sorry, Sicario 2. I heard it's quite Thank good, you. actually. It was okay. Yeah. Not bad. Yeah. That's my runner-up. Yeah. And my top movie of the year <laughs> is Bohemian Rhapsody. Bohemian Rhapsody is great. So I was not, you know, you had told me it was good and someone else I worked with told me it was good and I'm not a big Queen fan me at too. all. Me um, too. I'm not a Queen fan at all. I mean, I, I like Queen fine, but I'm not like a crazy fan. But I really, I really did like the movie yeah. and actually I have some questions. Yeah. First of all, I didn't realize how many songs I knew by oh, Queen. Oh, there's so many. Yeah. I mean, some of those songs, I'm like, I know them, but I didn't know that they were by Queen. Oh, okay. So that was one thing. But my question is, how accurate is the movie compared to what actually happened not, with the band? Not as much as you think. I've researched this because after I saw the movie, I, you know. First of all, Brian May, the guitarist, was yeah. involved in the production of the movie. Okay. So he was kind of making sure that, because you know what's going to happen. And as soon as something gets into Hollywood, they're going to like... Story it, you know. Mm -hmm. They're gonna, they're gonna, they're gonna dramatize everything. So I, he was there to like keep it on track, but like you know, the beginning of the movie. Well, no, I don't sort of say the beginning of the movie, but like it's condensed. Mm -hmm. You know, like from the time that they do their first album to the time that you know they're starting to get famous, they release like four or five albums. Oh, you know? really? Like okay. there's like the, the, the whole there's like a montage of them in concert, you know, and all this that it's really condensed. Like they 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 sh they shrunk the timeline down a little bit, and they really I think in an effort to sort of focus on like the creation of Bohemian Rhapsody, right? Like which is a big focal point of the movie. So I think it's quite accurate. Um, the other thing that I read that wasn't accurate, and I'm going to give some spoil. Well, not really spoilers because everybody knows Freddie Mercury had AIDS. It's not like a secret. Um, by the way, it's dramatized. That part is very dramatized when they they tell him uh, it's like he finds out that he has AIDS and then he wants to play Live Aid. Mm -hmm. That's not how it happened. Okay, <laughs> you know that's not how it happened at all. I didn't even know what Freddie Mercury looked like until yesterday. Oh, I, I, I so you really are not a queen. Well, I, I've never seen him before. Oh, okay. I, I don't know what any of those guys look like. <laughs> wow, now, I don't have any Queen albums at home. Right. I've never seen them live in concert. Right, Queen is like. You were never a classic rock guy in the first place. Right. And Queen is so like out there in terms of their style that I can see why it never appealed to you, right? Also, um, at least the actor who played yeah. um, Freddie Mercury, yeah. I don't know about the real Freddie Mercury, but the actor who played him, yeah. he has a completely different accent when he speaks and when he sings. Yeah, because I think he, I think he really tried to like... Like, he doesn't sound British when he's singing. No, well, I mean, I don't know. They tried He to, sounds American. He tried to sound like Freddie, which I guess... I mean, we went we, after the movie finished, I came home, we came home, I watched on YouTube the performance at Live Aid, mm -hmm. the whole performance. Yeah. It is incredibly... When you're saying, like, how accurate is stuff, that's accurate. Okay, so because that part it's is... In, it's recreated to the smallest little detail. Okay. The Pepsi and the beer on the piano. Okay. It's there. The guys sitting in the rafters, you know, like the the the, the roadies, mm -hmm. that's there. Okay. You know, like even his movements, the way he moves the mic and the things he says, little lines that he says just when he's talking to the crowd, it's it's like a hundred percent. I mean, it's shortened because they played more songs at Live Aid than what right, they showed. Right. But it's really like it's they they took care to like. But really what about make... what about that scene where they're in that guy's office, the EMI guy, and he's telling them, "I don't want to release this song because it's too long. I don't yeah. want to release Bohemian Rhapsody yeah. as the first single. Yeah. I want to release something else." Yeah. And they tell him to get get lost and and whatever. Apparently I don't want, I don't want to swear well, on, well, on our show. Mike Myers and is he... the guy that plays the record executive that they walk out on. Oh, I, I didn't even, even I didn't even realize that, that was Mike I know, Myers. He's, in, he's like in costume. And so they leave, and then they throw a rock or a brick through his window. Well, I mean, it's all dramatized, but yes, it's true. They walked out on their. They walked out on their. But how do you walk company? out on a contract? Who I don't know. Anyway, I don't know. But but what part that I when I read the the, the real story is, um, you know he he had a relationship like a, a friendship with this um, indie radio guy. They show him like doing yeah, their, yeah. that was like extremely extremely important to getting Queen. Um, to be successful because the record company didn't want to back them. Right. So they went around the record company and went right to this guy and they played Bohemian Rhapsody. They made it the first single with regardless of what the record company wanted. Then it was mm -hmm. too late, mm -hmm. you know? 
But then that song got bad reviews when it first came of out. Of course, it's only got popular like as time grew, right? I don't really like that song to be honest. I mean, it's. But how about I mean... how about some other stuff in the movie? <laughs> this has become a queen. No, session. but like so, you know, there's a few scenes where they start playing a song. It's the first time they're playing it yeah. in the studio. Yeah, yeah. You know, so no Another one's one heard... bites the dust. That yeah. one, yeah. yeah. Is that how really how they wrote the well, song? That's what like they this guy said. just started playing bass, and all of a sudden, oh yeah, that sounds good. Let's do that. I mean, who knows? I mean, only they know, right? But I mean, like I said, Brian May was part of it, the the production. So mm-hmm. I guess it's there must be some truth in it, right? Anyway. Right. So I, I again, I don't know how much of the movie is accurate, but it was a very it's interesting, an entertaining movie. It was an entertaining and, and, movie, and like you said, like you don't have to be a Queen fan to enjoy the movie. By the way, when they're in the cab and he fires that guy, the guy that was like his boyfriend. No, 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 not that guy, the other guy. Oh. The, the other, his real manager. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Who, who was that guy? Well, he was his real manager. He was their manager. But like he shouldn't have fired him because the only reason he, he brought that up yeah. was because the I other know. guy told him to bring I, it I up. I know, I know. So he should have... Well, the other guy was using him, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, he only found that out when it was sort of too late, you know? Anyway. Anyways. But yeah, so, so now that we talked about Queen, we're going to talk about music. Okay. So back in... The August. summer, August. you told me, by the way, we could record our year-end episode now. I already know what my favorite song of the year is. That's right. And then what did I tell you? I also know what my favorite song of the year is. Okay. <laughs> now, the thing is, it changed. I, I lied. Because what I thought was my favorite song, two weeks later, I got a new song. Okay. That doesn't <laughs> surprise me with you. So, do you want me to? I'll start. Okay. So, the, his, the long history of this category is we have completely different take. Well, we used to. Is this to ha- the last category of the show? Well, we're, you're going to give your concert, but that's just. Okay. You know. um, we used to have very similar taste in music. Mm-hmm. When I say very similar, similar. Mm-hmm. Um, but I was more into the classic rock mm-hmm. and maybe mellower music, and you were always into the alternative mm-hmm. and maybe a little bit heavier. Not heavy metal, but just more, more rock and stuff. And and over the years, I completely mellowed out, and I listened to radio, pop, whatever, whatever. And you still listen to like the same music, right? <laughs> Although rock is basically kind of dead-ish, so it's not back in the '90s when we used to listen to the Buzz, and we had all the same music, and we loved every, you know. I listened songs. to the equivalent of the Buzz in Toronto. The Buzz is still going on now, yeah. but it's like but I mean, like I said, like the content that they have to work with is not as good, you know. I listened to Indie '88. Yeah, so. Um, normally I pick a song that has radio airplay. Mm-hmm. Like I try to pick a pop song that I really enjoyed. You know, like one year I picked that song um, by the Chainsmokers, which you hadn't even heard of. <laughs> um, and this year, yes, it's a song that's getting radio airplay, but it's a song from one of the movies that I just mentioned okay. earlier. And it's a song from The Star Is Born. What's the song? It's called Shallow by Lady Gaga and Bradley Cooper. Bradley Cooper, the actor, actually right. sings. I know he is. Because he sings in the movie. Okay. Um, and if you listen to the radio, you could hear it. It's like, it's right now it's gotten a little bit overplayed. And like my wife and daughter are like, ah, oh, who cares? They don't even want to listen to it when it comes on the radio anymore. But Lady Gaga is so freaking good. <laughs> I, I hated her as a solo artist. I never would have ever listened to any of her music. but And I still wouldn't. But in that movie, she's amazing <laughs> the okay. way she sings. Because it's, like it's not like the pop garbage. It's more my style of music. Right. Now, the, the runner-up that, I, that was also, for me, was also a, mu- a song from a movie um, from Crazy Rich Asians. There's a, a Chinese version. <laughs> now, I know this sounds weird. But of the Coldplay song, Yellow. Oh, that's interesting. There's a Chinese version of the song that plays an important part in the movie, and it's really, really well done. And then after, who, who sings the Chinese version? Uh, it's a singer that I hadn't heard of. It's, okay, uh, she's uh, I, I, can't, I can't remember it. I didn't, I didn't write it down. Uh, she's young. She's like probably 18 or 19 years old. But um, you can research it after, and I did after I saw the movie, which is very interesting. That the director of the movie really wanted to use yellow in the movie, and he needed to get permission. And the record company, you know, they go through channels, and he was. They said no. Mm. He wrote a letter, a handwritten letter to Coldplay. Yeah. And they answered him the next day, 
uh, Chris Martin, and they said yes, you could use the song. Well, why they say no in the first? Because place? he explained why. I don't. Well, when you say no, it's because it doesn't even get to the band, mm. right? It just goes to the record company, and they say forget it, mm-hmm. right? And then when he appealed to the actual band and he explained to them why, it's like, and it was, it's really, it's really quite nice, you know. Okay. Well, yellow, yellow is like. It's kind of like he explained. It's like all his life, it was like a derogatory term right. for him being an Asian, an Asian American. You know, right, yellow. Right. You know, it's like meant as a meant as an insult. Mm-hmm. And when that song came out by Coldplay, he said it was sort of like the anthem of him and his friends. You know, like it, the song meant something to them, okay. even though that's not what it's about. It's okay. just, just having the word in there meant something to them. And so he really wanted it to be in the movie. So, anyways, it's there's a lot of stuff online about that whole story. Awesome. <laughs> So, my favorite song of the year. Yeah. Actually, funny enough, your song was sung, you said, by Lady Gaga, right? Yeah, yeah. So, my favorite song of the year and your favorite song of the year have one thing in common. Yeah. The album, the name of the album yeah. that my song is on. Yeah. The name of the album is called Ga 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 Ga. Oh, Jesus. Okay. That's the name of the album. Right. That's the only thing they have in common, okay. your song and my song. Right. Um, so the song that I am picking for my favorite song of the year, by the way, is 11 and a half years old. Yeah, you had told me in the, back in the summer that the song is like an old song that you kind of rediscovered. No, right? I never, I never, never knew, knew it, it 11 years ago. Right. I only discovered it in August of 2018. What is it? But it turns out that it's 11 years old, this song. Yeah. Um, so first I'll tell you the name of the band is called Spoon. Oh, Spoon. You've heard of Spoon? Maybe. I don't think you have. (laughs) And um, the name of the song is called The Underdog. Picture yourself in a living room Your pipe and slippers set out for you I know you think that it ain't too far. But I... And then, as the rest of 2018 went on, I discovered another song mm-hmm. by the same band oh. on the same album oh. called You Got Your Cherry Bomb, oh, okay. which is also a very good song. But okay. it didn't supplant the underdog as my top song of the year. So the album's 11 years old. How did you discover it? I just, I was listening to the radio one night on a Saturday night, I think, in my car. This was after 11 p.m. Yeah. And a song came on that I'd never heard. I said, oh, I really like this. And I, I wrote down a few of the lyrics, like I typed it into my phone. Yeah. Because I wanted to like find out, Google it later or something. Yeah. Or I might have written down the time so that I would go on the website later and check, okay, I, I know I was listening to Indie 88. What song were they playing at 11.15 or 11.30 or whatever time it was? Right. Because, you know, what, radio stations do this on their website now. Yeah. I'm like, oh, okay, so that's the name of the song. And then I didn't hear it again, I don't think. I downloaded it. Yeah. So then I could hear it as, as often as I wanted to. Right. Um, and then sometimes I hear it when I know you don't watch those channels on your television that only play music. I mean, I put them on sometimes when company comes over. Yeah, I watch those channels. Yeah. Well, there's only one. I watch the alternative. Well, you listen to them, I listen yeah. to it, yeah. yeah. And sometimes they actually play this song on that alternative. So that is my song of the year. You wanted to, you mentioned to me that you wanted to give your concert of the year. I didn't go to any this year, so I can't uh, participate in that. So, yes, I actually went to four concerts this year. That's a lot. So I'm going to rank them yeah. from number four to number one. Okay, yeah. Um, so number four, I can't tell you, I can't really rank it because I forget the name of the artist. I was, I was sort of, I was sort of... <laughs> you were at a concert that you didn't know? No, I, I've never heard of this band. And yeah. um, So why is it in the list? Well, because I went. Okay, next. <laughs> so that was number four. Number, number... Um, That's the funniest thing I ever heard. Here's my list. Number four, I don't know what it was. I just was there. I can maybe find out the name of the band. Yeah. Number, number two, sorry, number, number three... Uh, was Sloan. Yeah. I really like Sloan, but I was a little disappointed in the concert. That was just recently. It was, yeah. Yeah. It was like a month ago. Yeah. I was um, disappointed in the concert because they didn't play like my top two songs. I know. When I said, oh, Sloan, coax me, cajole me. They they didn't play that. I'm like, what? I know. It's very frustrating. And they didn't, 
they played like 30 songs, which is a lot. They wanted to play all their new stuff. But they cheap. played almost all, like, I only, I know their stuff. Yeah. And I only heard of like, not even 10 of the songs that they played. Yeah. Because they played all new stuff. Yeah. Not all new stuff, but a lot of new stuff. Sure. So I was disappointed. So they only get to number three on my list. Number two on the list, surprising, I'm sure it's going to be surprising to you, is Bananarama. Give me a break. First of all, you saw them in well, concerts? Well, again, it was, it was free. Two of these concerts were free. Bananarama, what the hell? Bananarama was better than Sloan. Well, yeah, because, I mean, I wasn't expecting anything going in. And it was at this really small venue. And then you had a good time. Yeah, and they, played, they played the songs that I know of cool theirs. Cool Summer. Yeah. Or, uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, so, um, so that's number two. And then my favorite concert of the year was Weezer which I went to with uh, Jamie and Pam. Right. Um, that was a very good concert. It was outdoors. It was in the summer. Right. And um, they have a new album, right? They Is do have a new album, trying? but they didn't play a lot of new stuff. That's they, the thing. I knew almost every song they played. Maybe one song they played that I didn't know. That's right. So, and one of the best things about that concert, I actually, I bought tickets when they first went on sale. Yeah. And then I entered... I didn't enter. I, I, I participated in this game on Indie 88 where you got to name five songs in 30 seconds. Right. And I actually won. Right. I remember and I won me. two tickets to the show. That's super. Um, in addition to that, the other thing I liked about the concert, at one point in the middle of the show, the lead singer gets on one of those little scooters. Yeah. Not, not an electric scooter, like yeah. the one you have to pedal yourself. Yeah. yeah. And because the way that venue is, is uh, built, it's not stairs. It's all ramps. Right. So he wheels on his scooter all the way to like, we don't know where he's going. He ends up in our row. And then he does about four or five songs acoustically, yeah. just him, not the rest of the band, while standing in our row. Like there was a little stage that was built yeah. in our row. Yeah. And so we were this close to him. It was great. That's very cool. So Weezer. Yeah. So Weezer was my favorite concert of the year. All right. Love it. So, all right, uh, so that's just, the awards. That's the awards. So just want to wish all our listeners uh, happy holidays. Um, hope that uh, 2019 is just as good as 2018, if not better. Great. Love it. And, uh, you know, tune in a year from today to hear next year's winners. <laughs> here's the here's 2019. Yeah. All right. I'll talk to you next time, Josh. All right. The Skip and Josh podcast is over now. Don't worry. There'll be another episode soon.